We are different from men and we need to learn how to honor ourselves and our beauty and our goodness and also understand our danger points. Like, like who is her in her darkness? And a lot of times we're afraid of her in her darkness. Like the dark feminine psyche, we're so programmed to be good girls. And it's scary. It's scary for us. We never wanted to bring her out. And the woman that brings her out, she's hysterical. She's crazy. She's like, do not be friends with her. And growing up, if you probably could think of a woman that was maybe too loud or too forward or too much, others judge her. For as long as we judge other women, we judge ourselves and parts of ourselves. So we cannot actually be our whole true, beautiful, authentic natures. Well, good day, everyone. We're back at Jill Collins Connections, and I am so thrilled to have today my spiritual mentor, Svetlana Newsom. I am thrilled to introduce you to her today. You may have seen her on the first interview I ever did with her husband, Jeremy, on relationships. We're back, and we're going to be talking about relationships, but also in a different way, really going deep on being a divine queen and what that means, and being a divine king, too, if you're a man watching this. But the focus is, how do we really show up for in our relationships? So this is what you're going to want to check today. If you're seeking a more dynamic relationship, a stronger bond with your partner, or you don't have a relationship, this is for you. Because Svetlana is going to show us the secrets and share with us the secrets to really connect and really be a divine queen. And I have taken her courses, and this one is one you don't want to miss. She's got one coming up at the end of January. So we're going to put the links all at the bottom. So stay tuned for that. And Svetlana, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you today. Jill, thank you so much for having me. It is such a joy, such a pleasure to be with you and conversating with you and sharing love and light with your audience. Thank you. Well, you know, I know we met several years ago now, and I know one of the things that I did not know about you initially is just where you came from and how you got started and, and coming to the U.S. at age 19, and you had $300 in your pocket, and you just had all these ideas of what you wanted to do as a child. And then you, you had all these things. And what we have in common that I didn't know was that you also are, are a widow and you, your husband died unexpectedly. And you, were, you had a one-year-old at the time. How did you get through that as a single mom and really finding a way, your way through, through life as through that, during that, pro that time and that process of grieving? It was definitely a time of grieving. And it was a time of deep, uh, deep despair. And I truly went into the search during that time. It actually was a time, now looking back, I can see that was a time where all of the spiritual doors and windows opened up for me. Even though I was quite connected since I was a little girl, I wasn't as maybe committed to the spiritual path. And after Reggie, uh, my first husband, after he died, the phenomena that was taking place, the things that were taking place, the dreams that I was seeing, I just had to know what happens after death. I wanted to know where he went. And that just unsettled feeling within me started moving me into beautiful directions where I got to meet some incredible teachers and meditate with Buddhist monks and learn all the different powerful spiritual practices and as a result, actually connect with him and receive my uh, opportunity to say my last sorry, my last I love you, and heal the um, agony and pain that we had from the loss because it felt like abandonment to me at that time, and it felt unfair, and it was so fast, and we also were so young, and we felt like we had a whole life to figure this relationship thing out and you know we got married and we had a baby and we were trying to figure out how to do this whole baby thing and we would bitter and fight and then we were okay and then he died and so I had just so much guilt around it I thought that I could be a better wife I could be a better woman I could be a better all of those things but then through the journey of healing after his death and me going through uh, self-development courses and spiritual practices, especially going through my life and relationship, uh, coaching certification training, I just realized I didn't have the tools. 
Like I didn't know that stuff. No one taught me. Like I didn't learn it in Kazakhstan. He didn't learn it in South Carolina growing up. And we did the best we could with the tools we had. And if we knew differently, we would have done it differently. And it was such a big, beautiful moment of forgiveness for me about blaming myself for not being good enough wife. Yeah, and I, I can totally relate to that. And it's so funny because I've been divorced and widowed. And I've obviously a lot of us have all had someone who've, who has broken up a relation, broken up with us and we feel abandoned. But there's something strange about being um, a widow and having someone die. You think they didn't abandon us intentionally, but the soul, the spirit, the body still feels that way. And I can so relate to that because I really went through a period of like needing validation from men in the early on. And uh, I was just on this journey. I was a train wreck. It was tough. And I wish I had met you sooner because um, I'm grateful for everything. There's no, there are no accidents. Um, but uh, I tell you, it was a rocky road. And I, in the fact that you found, uh, went on a spiritual journey so quickly and re you were able to really seek it out because you wanted to know what happened and you wanted to say, hey, you know, I want to have closure here. And a lot of times for me, I just brushed it off. I'm like, ah, Okay, I got this. That was done. All right, let's move on. Let's just put the big girl panties on and let's go. We're ne next. What's happening? And that was that that delayed me a few years, as you know. And um, I had to go backwards a little bit and start. Um, I wouldn't say backwards, but my it was my it's my journey, you know. So it's the journey I took. But um, I think too is just I think the <laughs> I'm going to say it this way is going through all the hard taking every difficult path one could take. I would say. A spiritual journey and do, going through that process is the only way that is finally I feel like I am whole. I am, I love myself. I am at one with myself. I am at one with the divine. I feel such a connection to God that I've never felt before. I'm in a new relationship that I am so thrilled about. And I just like, I love myself. I want to do my, my I want to serve people. My heart is, is so expansive. And, and you've taught me that prayer about. Um, God, you know, show me what I'm not seeing. I need a miracle today. And so that serves me all the time. Boy, where would I have been if seven years ago I would have had that? And I, but I wasn't ready. And so I encourage people who are listening is maybe we're not ready, but this is the way to go. And we're going to go into a little bit about Queen, Divine Queen and what you're doing with the course, because I took that course and I was blown away by it. I remember when I met you at one of the rich, first retreat you did, and you told me about what that was like about dark feminine and and all of this. And I said, wait a minute, what's this? I'm a, I'm a relationships coach. I'm like, I'm certified. And I said, I had never heard of that. And I felt like I got to stop what I'm doing because I want to know more about this. So how did you, when you went through this process, when did you find out about, or when did you have a better understanding of this whole process of being divine? And, and how could that, that relate to us and in, in our success in relationships? Jill, that was information that was coming in slowly, piece by piece for me as I was journeying on my journey. And it wasn't just all beautiful sunshine and butterflies by no means and spiritual. And I had a lot of human moments and a lot of destructive relationships and all kind of different things while really trying to anchor myself in a divinity and breaking the ego of the humanness, like in the desires of the world and uh, kind of making a sense out of it. And really, the Become a Divine Queen, when I finally burst it, it was for the woman that I was then. Huh. Because if I had myself when he died, if I had myself to guide me, it would be so much faster and it would be so much easier. It would be so much better. And I wouldn't need to cry as much, be broken as much, and to search as long. And it took over 10 years for me until I came to this evolution and then understanding and a wisdom about the evolution of a woman and what we go through and who we become. And then, again, it was a lot of just divine downloads and our life experiences and all of it put together, I was like, oh my goodness, like the world needs to know this because it is such a shortcut to your divinity and queendom and becoming her and 
we really are not taught this in school. We are not taught it by our mothers because our mothers do not know what we teach it to our mothers. We now explain them, hey, this is how it actually works. We are healers to them and we are healers to our daughters and to the world. But we didn't have the privilege of knowing the information that is knowing now, you know, that I share in a divine queen container or, you know, the divine feminine awakening that is taking place right now. And there are more and more beautiful, spiritual, incredible women that are in a front line saying, okay, we cannot continue the way we were programmed to. We are different from men and we need to learn how to honor ourselves and our beauty and our goodness and also understand our danger points. Like, like who is her in her darkness mm -hmm. and a lot of times we're afraid of her in her darkness like the dark feminine psyche we're so programmed to be good girls and it's scary it's scary for us we never wanted to bring her out and the woman that brings you out she's hysterical she's crazy she's like do not be friends with her and growing up if you probably could think of a woman that was maybe um, too loud or too forward or too too much like others judge her they didn't like her were afraid of her didn't know how to be with her or if it was if it if it was you indeed then wow how can i even be me when oh, everyone yeah. around me judged me right and I the truth help. is yeah so for as long as we judge other women, we judge ourselves and parts of ourselves. So we cannot actually be our whole, true, beautiful, authentic natures. And, you know, in, again, in the container we talk about, we go through the process of our women forgiveness and a judgment that we actually bring towards other women and how to say, I'm sorry, and how to fall in love with women and that relationship that we get to build with other women in the world takes us from women being dangerous to a sisterhood, uh -huh. to support. Right. We can finally right. rest. We can finally release. It takes us into forgiving our mothers and realizing we wanted them to be perfect. But dang, they're just as messed up as we are or even more. And they yeah. didn't have the tools and coaches and therapists and, and courses. Like we do, now we can do something about it. They didn't have those things available. Yes, I think that, and that's why I love this channel and doing this is because I love to be able to give this opportunity to so many people. I'm so blessed to have so many connections that I've made with people that are so dynamic and divine as you are to say, I want to share this with you. I want to share this and show you how you can actually enhance your relationships with everything from money to, to, you know, love relationships to self, you know, and, and what comes to mind is what you said is, um, you know, I, I thought of something the other day, a friend of mine said to me, oh yeah, um, they, they're dating, she's dating and she has a, a couple and she said, oh, I, our kids just met each other. And, you know, um, these two are just so easy. They, 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 they accept everything. They're like, you know, where do you want to go to dinner? Oh, I don't care. I'm okay. And gosh, that's a, that's a really good kid, you know, a really good kid who just accepts and says, I'm, I don't care whatever you want to do. And mm. I thought to myself, I thought, huh, is that really a good, is that really what we want, we wish for, for our children, that we want them to be easy to, to get along with, or that they just accept what everybody else wants to do? And it kind of hit me. I'm like, is that people pleasing? Or is that someone who just really is like indifferent and they're just whatever? So I don't know. What do you think about that? And we, as women, we do that too. You know, we go, oh, I don't care. Whatever you want to do. Yes. And, and then again, to up. it can be, we don't know that person. So we can just assume certain things. It can be definitely people pleasing. It can be that the person truly doesn't care. But how beautiful it is to have someone who actually cares, who actually know what they want and desire, who actually have the strengths in their personality to say, no, this is not the way. I don't like this food. I like this food instead. Like, oh, yes, it's problematic, right? Because now you cannot just tell your kid to do whatever you want them to do, right? And you run your life. Now you actually need to 
consult them and see them as their own human beings with their own consciousness, with their own desires, with their own strengths and beauty, and respect that. And it might not be exactly how you like to operate, but you can only be an awakened mother when you become an awakened woman. Mm -hmm. And when you become an awakened woman, you actually appreciate all of those quirks and strings and fights that your children put up because that's what makes them true. And again, I look at my two-year-old and his nose are so strong. And I'm just amused. I'm like, when did I lose the strength of a no? Like, he just so, he owns his body. He knows, he owns his mind his desires, and if he doesn't want something, he's, no. It's not like, okay, well, take me there, right? And if he wants something, it's yes. And there is no in-between. And Jeremy and I, we both look at him, we have so much to learn. It's fascinating to see that strengths our personality in a tiny little human being that already knows, this is who I am, this is what brings me joy, this is how I like to be treated, This is how I want to be loved, and I'm here to show you. So we don't need to show him. All we need to do is to hold the space for him to show us how to raise him, because he so knows. So there's such a lesson to learn from Jason, your two-year-old. And what could, I mean, it, it just reminds me of so many times, like in relationship for me in the past, and I think so many that we've, that we try to be agreeable to be loved and to be accepted. And something I learned in uh, your queen's course, the divine queen course, is really loving myself and honoring my, my inner voice, my, my intuition, and not just pushing it down and forcing it to, to be agreeable in order to be accepted and loved. And I'd like to talk about that because I think, you know, there, I'm going back a little bit, but like the thing about with we were saying about being widowed or being being in a, starting over in a relationship, say you just divorced or you just broke up with somebody or you've been single for a very long time or you're not in a happy marriage and you're trying to find a way to feel happy about it is. Is there a fast track? I mean, what is the fast track? Everybody, I know for me, when I when I got divorced, I'm like, I want to everybody said, give it a year. And I'm like, OK, the year came and went and it still sucks. OK, so what? So how do I how do people get it fast and what is it? That, that learning about being a divine queen can, can get people on the fast track. I don't know, Jill, if the fast track necessarily the something we need to go for, right? Because again, fast track is what else can I do? I have a friend, she went through the divorce and she got three therapists, right? It's like, I can't do one, let me do three so it can be fast, right? It is not <laughs> going to be faster healing. It hurts. And it's okay to sit actually with the pain for a little while. You don't want to be lost in it for years, but it's, it's, it is appropriate time can be given to different circumstances. And then, of course, everything comes and will come into your own, your own wholeness, your own well-being. Another man is not going to give you what you lost. Another person is not going to come in and fulfill you if you don't know how to fulfill yourself. Another person cannot come and complete you in love if you do not really love yourself. And even if they love you so, so, so much, you're not going to feel it because you do not love you and you don't feel like you're lovable. And no matter what they do and how they worship you, you are not going to feel like a goddess that you are that is ready and willing to be worshipped. So... The journey will need to start with you, you learning to recognize your own greatness and your own goodness and you choosing yourself and saying no when needs to be said no and saying yes what needs to be said yes. Because every time you desperately want a relationship and you lean into something and you say yes when, in, when internally you wanted to say no, what happens is you said no to yourself. Now you betrayed yourself. Now you are further away from your divinity and from your light. Now you are separated from your essence just for the idea of the relationship maybe saving you. And I see it so often that women dissolve in a relationship. They meet someone and they abandon themselves and they 
become what they think that person want them to be. And guess what? You become so not interested anymore to that person because there is nothing of you truly left any longer. Of course, the person walks away and, you know, they find someone else, a breakup happens and everything else. Like women, it's so, so unhealthy for us to dissolve in a relationship. So in order not to do that, we need to actually find ourselves and own ourselves and love ourselves. And that is a journey. And that is what we go through in a Divine Queen container in a big, beautiful way. Okay. I love that because it is true. It's, it's I, what you said was just hit so hard. I, I, I know for sure when I, when you first said this, you know, a couple of years ago when I heard this is no matter how much someone loves you, um, if you don't love yourself, you won't feel that love. And I, when you just say hearing that again now made me go, oh yeah, I can remember how many times, you know, years, several years ago, did I feel that? And, you know, if someone said in a relationship or it was there, but it just could not penetrate. It did not penetrate. I, it, I would, I would feel, I would get the, the attention from the, from a man and that felt good, but then it was never enough. It was never, it, I was never satiated. I was never satisfied. I never felt like content and truly loved and truly uh, like truly just safe if that makes sense and so i love it, that you said that. it absolutely it absolutely does and i feel like all of us been in that position at one time or another time right and again the person might love us but we don't feel it and they might care for us but we don't feel it truly because there is still a void within ourselves and we don't feel like we are whole, we are good, we are worthy, we are deserving. Or maybe we had past experiences of people leaving us or abandoning us. And so we just want a constant reassurance, text message me 15 times a day, right? Then you really get into your neurotic, psychotic, crazy behaviors and it's too much for anyone to handle. It's even too much for yourself to handle yourself when you actually get so crazy, right? Because your nervous system is fired up. You feel completely insecure. And no matter how many times he texts you, you still feel insecure. No one can ever make you feel secure if you don't feel that inside. So again, it is you stepping back and saying, okay, between all this relationship that didn't work out or worked out or broke or whatever else, the only person that is constant is me. And if I wanted to have it differently next time around, I need to become different. Because with the same personality, with the same thought patterns, with the same energetics, it's going to be the same relationship, just maybe with a different guy, right? in a different outfit, from a different country, or whatever else. But it is going to be the patterns that needs to be healed, they still will show up. and. It doesn't matter how old you are, 20-year-old, 40, 50, 80, there will come a time in your life where you will need to do self-work. And that's really what we're here for, to evolve our souls, to become the brightest light we can be, and to share that light with the world, with our lovers, with our children, with our grandchildren, and all the people that truly matter to us. But we need to access it and really reveal it because that is our authentic nature. We are good. We are divine. We are light. That's how we are created. Everything else is a lie, but we've lived in a light in a human dimension for so long, and we've been parent by humans, and we've been, you know, through different religions and through different ways, we started believing that we are actually less than goodness, less than divinity, less than light. And that is dangerous. And so coming out and start peeling everything that is, no, that is not true. Like the thought coming in and so the saying, you know, you're, you're not beautiful enough. Who is saying that? Is it mm. God? Is it divine? No. Who are you then? Well, go to light. You do not belong here because this is not who my truest essence is. Okay. So, um, I, cause it, this makes so much sense cause I've done this, but I'm thinking about someone who maybe me in the beginning and thinking, hearing this and I'm going, wow, that's a lot. So what is the access point Two questions? Maybe they're the same, but what is the access point to tap in and to get there? 
in how does one love oneself? How do you how do you actually love yourself? Because people would say, oh, be kind and gentle with yourself. Your husband just died. I'm like, what does that mean? Go get a massage, go to the spa, you know, do some self-care to have a bubble bath. I didn't know what that meant, like to love myself until January of this year. Um, truly, I mean, I did, but now and then I really got it at your event. Um, so tell me, tell us what that what that looks like. So when someone said, "Be gentle to yourself, be kind to yourself, be loving to yourself," I translate it all into a complete self acceptance, full, complete, unapologetic self acceptance. Accept yourself where you at. Like, do not build yourself up. We can never heal through judgment. We can only heal through love. And so you telling yourself you should be different or beating yourself up in any kind of way or trying to do something insane to prove something takes you away from actually healing because you're putting the judgment, the comparison, you're not enough, you should be further away. But through that full acceptance of this is where I'm at, I'm healing. I am walking forward. I am becoming more. And this is my path. And I will be loving myself through every stage of this path that I am walking. The healing will start accessing so fast for you. That is such a big, big speedway for you actually to come into a space of wholeness, of unconditional love, and with the goodness. Because the reality is most everyone says, yes, I love myself. But what they mean is, I love this body, or I love this personality, or I love this ego. Like, what is self? Who is self? It's very subjective. And it changes. It's not not constant. It's something you can't really always know for certain that it's always, you're always going to. What if I'm, what if I get sick or get hit by a car and I'm I'm a vegetable in a bed for the rest of my life or I can't move? Am I still as valuable? Do I still love myself as much? And that's the, that's the test I always ask myself too is, you know, if I'm, if I don't do anything today, am I still as valuable? Um, and it, but that requires a lot of reprogramming. Yes. Because we are so programmed to be invaluable by doing. And yeah. so coming from a human doing, which is very masculine energy, right? And it's not a divine queen energy. It's a princess energy. Comparing, contrasting, pushing, striving, demanding. Like it's so jittery. It's, so, it's necessary to go through that stage. But if you're in that stage for a long, long time, at some point, you just get exhausted. You're like, dang, what else? Mm-hmm. I want to go into the stages of this, too, because if you, have to, if you um, are willing to do that, we explain what this is for the Divine Queen course, because I think hearing the stages will be valuable. You know, but I want to go back to where you said, um, you know, truly loving ourselves and, and then it's, it's self-acceptance and not judgment. And the distinction to me, because I started with like a lot of personal development, as you did, and then going on a spiritual journey and taking that to the next level. and it's not a, just about affirmations or incantations. Like I'm looking in the mirror going, man, I'm, I'm awesome. I'm awesome. I'm awesome. And the inner, inner being is going like, you're full of shit. You don't believe that. You know, so you've got to correct the inside. It's deeper than just saying it enough times and looking at something on a mirror and sticky notes all over the place. It's got to really be totally right in here. And, it's, and I love that distinction. And I want everybody to hear it again, is that it is, comes from not judging yourself. It is being kind to yourself and no judgment. And something you taught me, and I think I intuitively kind of did it that, that weekend in, in late January when we were at the, I was at the relationships retreat, is I talked to my little girl and, I, and you taught me to say, ask her what she needs. And I did that. And boy, that was the first time. And I literally, and I do this sometimes now, I was just, I hold myself. I said, what do you need? What do you need, Jill? What do you need, little Jill? What do you need? It's going to be okay. You're going to be all right. And boy, just... That catapulted me in so many ways, just opened it up where I loved myself and I trusted myself because I showed up and I asked that silent voice that I used to just push down and say, be quiet now, we're doing this anyway, now stop it, you know, like a kid. And now I listen to her, so. And there it is. It's such a beautiful moment when we realize that there is an inner version of us that is a little girl, a little boy that is inside. And actually he or she is the one that is striving for love and wanted to be accepted, and wanted to be seen. And then we have our adult version of ourselves and all the experiences of life that we had as an adult. And again, a lot of times it's easier to be with the children that are just obedient, and they just go wherever you tell them to go. But that is not your inner little girl or little inner boy inside. They want to be seen. 
They want to be respected. They want to be respected for their yeses and their noes. They want to be noticed. They want to be loved. And you are the one now as a grown person to love on them. And by doing so, you can restore the harmony within yourself and the trust. And now your little girl who might have been abandoned, whose daddy left or mom passed away or something else might have happened or screamed on, finally, for the very first time, feels loved and protected by you. At some point, we become our own mothers or our own fathers, a lot of times both for our inner child. And our inner child can be at peace, can experience deep love, and you are free as an adult to go and create wonderful and beautiful experiences in your love life or in your business because your inner child now is not going to be screaming and pulling on you and pushing on you the whole time freaking out. I love that I, because that's, that's so true. I did not even know that existed before until you showed me that. And that's so grateful for that because it was it was so easy for me to just be in that masculine energy and just say do it anyway let's go suck it up buttercup it's time to go let's go we're not no we're not gonna sit around here and get grieve here this is the no you're not crying come on let's just get up you can do this let's make it happen you know and yes no wonder i didn't attract really great men back then <laughs> yeah anyway and and jill truly it's not you it is most women who lose someone really what happens in the griefs the grief in the beginning if we go into healing right away Actually, we, it will be very hard for us to go out, to get out. So what happens most of the time, we actually put the big girl's pants on and we got to deal with life because we got to deal with the finances. We got to deal with a funeral. We got to deal with the big things in life. And so it helps that putting big girl's pants on helps us just to start moving, right? And then when you're like, okay, I'm still alive. I survived. Now, and it's usually, you know, three months, six months. Now you need to say, I have to go inside and start healing. So going straight into like divorce or anything like that, going straight into the healing, you can just dissolve there and be lost there and just do not even know how to get out of there unless you're doing it truly with someone incredible professional that can guide you through it and pull you up and through all of the processes. But if you're on your own, what I see most of the time in grief, in loss, in divorce, is big girl's pants on first, figuring out the life, and then opening up the door for healing. Ah, oh, brilliant. I love that. Well, I kind of did that right, except I think I was more on this three-year, two- or three-year plan versus a three-month or six-month plan. <laughs> oh, well, slow learner. Um, but uh, very determined. Um, so can we walk through a little bit about what the dream, I'm sorry, what the Divine Queen course is? You also have a dreams course, which I love. And I hope you do that again soon, too, because that one's just so amazing. I've manifested so many great things from that co that course. But um, the Divine Queen, can you walk us through um, the steps, the stages? And I know you started to talk about it, how the little girl or the girl um, is necessary. All steps are necessary. You don't just like, OK, I'm a Divine Queen. Here we go. You don't get to just start there. And you mm -hmm. shouldn't. Right. Okay. It just doesn't doesn't work out like that for us. And every every woman starts as a girl. You're born, you're little, you're tiny, you're you're fragile, you are pure, you're incredible, you're beautiful, you're a little girl. And as a girl starts growing up, um, two years, three years, five years, seven years, she gets heartbroken in a way. Uh, her innocence gets stolen. It might be a girl in a kindergarten in your class that says, I don't want to be your friend anymore. And you're like, well, what do you mean? I thought everyone loves me and I am friends with everyone. And for the very first time, you realize, wow, someone might not be your friend and they don't like you actually. And it hurts so much. And so that's a moment where our purity gets stolen and actually the moment where our dark feminine psyche starts to develop because then we start learning the ways of the world and how to survive. Right? So for some, it's to forgive. 
for others. Let me go and find, be friends with another three girls. And we, I'm going to tell all of them not to be friends with this girl. We actually start learning, especially like a women, how to play the games. Because it's so dangerous to be just pure you, the innocent you. You really will have a very, very hard surviving. Right? And there are some women that are very, that are, you know, at older age, they're still in a girl stage. And that girl stage, either they became so delusional and disconnected from the world, feel their, their, their innocence. But they are also, they, you cannot connect with them because they're just so lost in that innocent and they are not very productive or out there. Or they're really not shining their bride and being the most authentic and wonderful versions of themselves, right? It's almost like escapism in a way. Mm -hmm. And then... And it, so isn't it also that they're, um, they're uh, relying on other people to take care of them still? Yes, absolutely. A girl stage, you need to take other people. You, you have to have mom, dad, husband, your children, someone to take care of you because you cannot take care of yourself. You constantly blame others for what happened in your life. You cannot take responsibility for your own actions. You don't believe that you're actually a creator of your life, that you manifest everything, whatever is going on in your life. So it's always someone else's fault. It's a president's fault, it's government fault, it is ex's fault, it is the husband's fault, it is children's fault. That's why you are not where you want to be or supposed to be. Uh, it's a lot of escaping into the um, TV shows, Netflix, you know, all kind of dramas of it for 10 hours a day, every, every moment. So it's really living someone else's life versus your own life. Uh, sometimes it is alcohol and drugs and other things usually to numb the pain. Uh, but really, yeah, the girl is a victim. She's a victim of the world. She's a victim of the society. And she feels like that because, again, her innocence is being stolen. She wants to be innocent. It is everyone else's fault that she cannot be that innocent little girl. And so that's where we all start. Some right. girls, so they are. And they're like, at five, they're like, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. I am ready to start stepping into my other elements and start developing myself. And again, some people just stuck in that position and they are 60, 70 years old. And the reality is a lot of our mothers are still girls. No. Wow. That, that's, that's tough. I've seen that, that there's a lot of that where you've, you know, especially single moms sometimes is that we tend, not we, um, but. The tendency is sometimes you see that you mentioned this is relying on your kids. It's almost like your kids are your friend or you see the, the reverse role sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's that feeling um, needing to be taken care of or provided. Nothing wrong with being provided for in a relationship, but it's that it's that choosing. It's almost like you um, you will settle for someone in a relationship in order to be taken care of because you don't feel safe and you need that feeling of like still being a girl and someone has to just provide for you so a lot of women will put up with abuse even and yes. other things in that space they would, yes with a lot of different things and again it is so much more deep and complex that we can discuss just in a, in a two three five minutes that we have about the girl but the moment the girl decides i'm done being a girl i'm done being a victim i'm going to take my life in my own hands she steps into a princess stage and the princess is a very, very important stage because that's where you like, I'm going to go get a job or I'm going to go get to college so I can get a job and all of the things and then start building up. And princess, she really starts taking life in her own matter. I can do it. I'm going to be successful. I can create something. I can survive. I can take care of my children if I have children. I am not just going to be dependent and being a victim uh, of the world any longer. And so princess is such a beautiful stage because that's where a woman finds her inner power. She finds her inner strengths. Like a lot of, again, princess stages when you start learning self-development and reading books about becoming better. When you're a girl, you don't care about becoming better. You're just a victim. You want everyone else to take care of you. Here, you choose to take care of yourself. So now you start reading book, you're becoming smarter, you are more educated, 
you're more capable and you feel more empowered. You feel good about yourself. But also at the same time, you never feel good enough about yourself because princess, she never feels completely, she hasn't arrived yet. She doesn't feel home yet. She's still in a war with the world. She's still trying to prove. She's still trying to fight. Um, She doesn't have it all together yet. She compares herself to other successful women and she feels less than. And then she would compare herself to non-successful women and all the girls so she can feel better than. Right? And the princess also is very, very, very demanding. So a woman that is very demanding in a relationship, you should treat me like this and you should do this. And pointing fingers, it is a very, very pr- a princess energy because, again, she has a right now to demand. She worked on herself so hard. She achieved something. It was a hard journey in a way. And she wants to be treated in a certain way, but she doesn't have the embodiment and the grace and wholeness within herself that this is just how I walk into the room and everyone knows that this is how I'm treated or how I'm spoken to. Right? She doesn't possess the wisdom of a queen, of a silent power, of grace. Um, it's still very reactive and it's a lot of masculine energy in a princess stage. Again, you cannot go from a girl into a queen. It doesn't happen. You have to learn how to take care of yourself, how to provide, how to, you know, put on big girl's pants and survive. That is all happens in a princess stage. Powerful, beautiful. But then after a while, it gets so exhausting. Where we go, come on. I read all these books. I've done all this stuff. I know all this information. I'm so smart. Like, why my life is still a shit show in a way, right? Why am I still single? Why are my relationship men coming in and out? And I cannot be with someone for more than two years or three years or whatever that is. And you don't feel fulfilled. You feel like something is still missing within you. And and you realize that "Mm, probably reading more books and going to another really high rara course or class or event is not actually going to take you where you want to be. And you need to start embodying some other energies. And that is where a princess says, okay, I'm exhausted. I am ready for another way. And another way comes in, and that is a way of a queendom where you are being invited to actually have your own queendom and come on your throne and wear your crown and to be a queen. It is a space of high honor and high responsibility because now you have the whole queendom that is looking up to you. So it is a space of deep leadership. So you become a beautiful leader for yourself, but you also become very gentle with yourself. You become healed in healing. And again, we will be healing for the rest of our lives, but you actually start embodying your divine feminine. Divine feminine is, is like a river. She's very nourishing, right? And she nourishes everything that is in that river, all the fish and the fisherman and children that are playing in it, right? She has more than enough and she's flowing and She's floating and she's very, very nourishing and very, very delicious, right? And so you realize that for you to be like a river, to be like a queen that can flow, you need to start nourishing yourself. You cannot just be running and doing things like you did when you were a princess. Queen, she starts filling her cup. She starts honoring herself, meditating, opening up dancing, connecting with your body, connecting with your mind, with your soul. It becomes a beautiful spiritual journey. And so once she knows how to fill herself up, now she can actually give out from her full cup that overflows rather than from, you know, an empty cup where there is nothing left, one tiny sip, and your husband is still licking it or your children, (laughs) and you're just so desperate, and you don't have anything left, and you're still giving, right? So with the queen, you actually start focusing on your well-being, on your wholeness, on your mental health, and you, no one will give you time. Ladies, no one will say, 
okay, this is your time, it arrived until you do it. You declare, this is my time. I'm going to tell my maybe babysitter to stay an extra 12, 20 minutes or come earlier so I can actually spend me time and pour it into myself. I'm going to start organizing my life in a, any way possible. I will wake up a little earlier, but I have to fill my cup. I need to understand myself. I need to know what hurts me, what brings me joy and who I am. And so that is a way of a queen and the way of nourishing. And as a result, self-acceptance, like, and non-judgment and more and more deeper love. And that is not pretentious over, over ego, that is more wholesome and deep. And of course, beautiful spiritual teachers, books and leaders start coming in and you just become more and more open and more and more abundant and magnetic. Right? Divine feminine, we are magnetic. We don't need to actually, you know, when in a princess stage, you a lot of times you're in that masculine energy. So you got to go and get and go and get. Here you become magnetic. So you attract. You work on the inside of yourself. What do I have a fear about? Well, I have a fear about this man uh, not ending up being what I dream him to be. Okay, well, let me get rid of this fear. And when you get rid of this fear, you pull it out and you remove it. And that man removes or he comes so, cl so close because he is the one. So the work becomes inner work. Princess is outer work. Queen is inner work. Because you're a master manifester, you are attracting everything that you want in your life, and you, you're very wise. Like, the princess is smart. She knows, she's smart, she read book. Finally, you go into wisdom, into your obedience. How do I feel here? Is it my yes or is it my no? This is my no. I should not be going there. You listen into yourself. You start trusting yourself. You start trusting divine within yourself. And you truly become a divine queen. Because instead of trusting your psychotic, neurotic, crazy self that will take you on a run so that are exciting, they're exciting and they're juicy and they can be fun and they are human. But you finally come into space of peace and wholeness and honoring that. And you learn a different way of love different way of share and uh, you create very beautiful incredible divine relationships with your soulmate with your children with your community and you serve in a whole different way i love that so much because i was this whole journey and everyone this is what the whole course is about that uh, svetlana teaches and you just have to check it out it's so good it's online which is great it doesn't matter where you live but, um, you know, something comes to mind is that when you're talking about pouring from a full cup versus an empty cup, I remember people just used to say that to me. People would say, you're pouring from an empty cup. I'm like, what? Because I love to give. But it was that forced give. It was that just, you know, doing, doing, giving, doing, giving versus just giving out from my soul, from my heart. It's a different feeling. It's not the same. And I think where I really learned another part of that self-love and um, getting into the divine queen is speaking your truth. You know, we yes. talked about that with Jason is when you're speaking your truth and you're saying no to something because you don't feel it. Boy, I tell you the first couple of times, this has been an interesting journey. And I was going to do a little video or talk on this because I think, that, but this is a perfect time to bring it up is that we go through this to me. I went for me anyway, I went through this stage of like, okay, I'm speaking my truth. And then you start out and because we're in, sometimes we're in that princess stage or we're just that, you know, I'm going to speak my truth now. And this is my new thing. This is me. And so you do that. I don't give a frick what people think about me. And you go the all the way to the other side. And it's like, I don't care. And but so then, then, but then when you do speak your truth and you start to get more gentle about it, then there's that, oh, but I feel guilty because maybe I should have not done that. I should have been nice. I should have just done it anyway because, well, I don't want him to feel bad. And then you go through that pendulum. So that's, that's like the middle. And then you come over to the, I don't care what anybody thinks. And that's when you go to swing over. Right. And so that's the journey for me, how I got there. And now it's like, I can truly speak my truth. And I learned to trust myself and love myself even more when I say, you know what, I'm just not comfortable in this relationship. I don't, I don't feel like this is moving where I want to go. And I need to, I need to, um, to step aside, to step back from this. But thank you so much. It's been really nice knowing you. I really wish you well. And boy, when I say that, it's like, she's going, 
you did it. Yes, that's what you felt. That's what that's what I wanted. That's what I felt. Yes, thank you for showing up and for listening to me. Instead of like, yeah, we can probably just stick with it. It's not so bad. And then she's in there going like, you know, manic. I love this so much, Jill, because you realize you go, when, when you do this, I'll speak my truth. You and your dark feminine. Okay, let's talk dark feminine because yes. this is so the part I not She wants to come out and come out and just tell you all how to do it, how to be it, how to treat it. And so she's very, she's aggressive in a way, right? Or very, very upward. And then what feels good to you is actually when you share your truth from the divine feminine, because that is your truth. Mm -hmm. And that is a big difference. And then in the middle, when you're trying to say, well, maybe I don't see anything. It's your low feminine because you just wanted to be, eh, meh, well, I just want to be liked. I don't want it to disturb anything. Right. And that is a difference is you can, you can communicate the same thing. But what part of you is it coming from? Is it coming from a divine queen energy? Is it coming from a divine feminine? Or is it coming from your dark feminine? And that is a whole difference in the world. And so again, in a divine queen container, we go through different levels of our divine feminine, of our dark feminine essence. And I do not like to talk about dark feminine until we embody divine feminine, because I do not believe we have any business to deal with our darkness until we know how to anchor in our light because that can pick us up and become so juicy and we just want to run with it. So we actually need to know the light and how to anchor in the light and how we are like light. And so we do a lot of practices on embodying ourselves in light and in divinity and the wholeness. And then we go and look in, uh, into, into our dark feminine essence. And there are different ways of her, right? Uh, my way is she's a destructive woman that just wants to burn the whole city because she feels like it. Like that's how she usually wants to march out from her closet. Like watch out. Some uh, For some it is a prostitute that sells out. Like she will sell out her values in order to receive what she thinks she wants. So that manipulative person. Uh, for some, it is a mother, unhealthy mother who treats her lover like a little boy versus her partner, right? So she, that woman will come out and start mothering everyone and tell everyone how to live their life. So those are all our dark feminine essences, and they come out in a different ways. And again, we go through them very much in details. But what I, usually, what I share with all of my women, that they are not wrong. They are your protective essence that is saying, something isn't right here. I don't feel right about this thing. I don't like, I don't like how I'm being talked to. I don't like being disrespected in such a way. I don't like that I am in this situation. And that is when your dark feminine shows up. The thing is, though, ladies, for the divine queens, we do not run in the world with our dark feminine. We know her. And we process you in a sacred space with ourselves on a small community. Because there is this whole movement about the dark feminine. This is just how I am. And just deal with that. Like there is no grace in it. Why? What is it for? You don't feel good. The person next to you doesn't feel good. The relationship gets really damaged because of that. Um, your partner can't trust you anymore because he doesn't know when you'll have another your psychotic episode. There are some things that we process with ourselves. And so I really teach women how do we process it with ourselves, what it looks like. We have amazing practices, amazing meditations, and screaming and dancing and releasing and all of that stuff, right? Because you want to know her. When she starts showing up, you're like, hmm, darling, you are here. So I need to listen to you. Because if you do not listen to your dark feminine, she would have wanted to march out and tell the world. So you wanted to pay attention to her, to listen to her. And then, wow, yes, absolutely. I am being dishonored here. I cannot believe that my friend would speak so poorly about me and betray me. And, and so instead of taking the dark energy and going there, you process it and then you tap into your divine. But what is the truth? The truth, I will never abandon myself. The truth that I am love. The truth is that I am hands and eyes and feet and mouths of God and divinity in this world. The truth is that I am love and I'm going to now go with this truth and have a conversation with this person. 
have I hurt you? Was anything that I've done wasn't up to your standards that you would share such a gossip about? So you still, you don't escape the, the situation. You still deal with that. But the conversation that you will now have is very different. It's very loving. It's very divine. And you know that no matter what the person say, it's almost like your opinion of me is none of my business because I know who I am. You always suggest don't know me well enough if you think like that about me. This is not who I am. That's yeah. so beautiful. That is so beautiful. Gosh, I just get chills. I'm like, I want to do your course again. Uh, I miss you, <laughs> ladies. <laughs> so good. I'm telling you, you have no idea how awesome Svetlana is. I don't call her my spiritual mentor for nothing. Mm, I, you love you know, so I love you too. You know, something hits me is um, the stages. Everyone probably, we've, I think we've talked about this in the course, is um, are they dynamic? Meaning, are they, do, do you just like all of a sudden you're a divine queen all the time and you never hit that girl again and you're like, okay, I kicked it. I'm good. I'm a divine queen. I mean, I know you would do that with grace and with, with, with wisdom, but do you see what, I, you know what I'm saying? Is like, is it, do we drop back? I mean, are we bad if we don't, oh shoot, I just went and blew up at my friend. Oh, I'm back down again. No. Not that, not that it's a, you know, that it's a competition or it's a. The only competition that you have is with yourself, right? You just wanted to be a little bit more graceful, a little bit more loving, a little bit more divine every single day. And of course, you will go through your human moments. And of course, someone will piss you off and you'll decide that, you know, you just, you will go into the maybe princess stage uh, for a little while. And then you say, you know what? I've been there before. I don't like it anymore. Like, that's why I braided myself into divine queen. I like living, the, living there a lot more. So even though you 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 will still drop down, right, or go through the d d different stages, you're just not going to stay in them anymore. You just find a new, it's really that up-leveling into a new life where you learn how to live. And even though you will revisit those stages at times, you're not going to drop there and live there any longer, right? Because if you do, then you actually never became her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And so you can, you can drop even for a few days, even for a week, right? But if you drop there, you know, you're a divine queen and now you've had a divorce and now you are a girl and it's been 15 years and you are still a girl. No, you've never been a divine queen. You've never been a queen. You don't even know what that is, right? Because that feels so good and this will feel so destructive that she will find a way to come back into the truest essence of who you are because being a divine queen, you know that you are divine, that you are good, that you are light, and you will never believe any lies from anyone. You will never take it, and you will always come back to that solid crystallization of who you are. Yeah, I know. I it, That feeling, it's like you just can't go back. It's that jar darkness, that feeling of just um, such defeatist in, in, the, in the victim. Gosh, you just don't want to stay there. It's it's like, whoa, come back, come back. I don't like that. I don't like that anymore. And so, yeah, it is normal. And I, and it, but I can, I am so self aware of my body now to be able to say, oh, I, I feel off today. What happened just now? Did somebody say something? Did I read something? What just happened? And then I check in to see what got me off a little bit, or I'm a little bit disgruntled. You know, and that's part of my prayer as well. We we talked about Mary Williamson, Course in Miracles as well, and and the Return to Love and you know, it's, um, you know, who do I, you know, who, who do I have a grudge with today? Who, who am I, um, where do I have a, um, where am I disgruntled? Who haven't I forgiven? And it's just going through that mental checklist every morning and saying, who do I need to forgive? Where am I feeling off? What do I, what just happened that somebody didn't bring me the right thing at the restaurant or whatever? And then I told them three times and it's like, that's just not worth it. So give that up and get rid of it right away. And, and then it's just forgive God, show me what I'm not seeing. Um, help me to give me, I need a miracle. Help me to see this differently so I don't feel something about whatever it is. For me, it could be I'm insecure about something or I feel nervous about this thing. God, take this away from me. I need to feel confident here. I need to feel good about this. I need to feel love and have my heart so open so I'm so trusting and loving of people that I'm working with. You know, that type of thing. It's just, it's, it, you get so, like, you just need it. You just want it. You don't, you want to stay in this. Like, it's like being in the sun. You just want to be in the sun. And when it's, you know, when there, there's a, all the, you know, the, the sunny part of the, of the beach or something, it just feels so good. Yes. And Jill, what I love about you is that in, at this part of your journey, now you're fine tuning. Mm -hmm. 
Now you're just fine-tuning little things. Oh, yeah, and this little thing doesn't feel right. And so I'm going to bring this into light as well. Right? Where before it was a big things. And everything seems so big and so overwhelming, right? Now it is the, how can be a more divine with this waiter in a restaurant? How can I be more divine with this? Now it's fine-tuning little, little tiny things that you become more and more and more crystallized. And so it is for me. I am constantly fine-tuning different things and discovering, oh, wow, I would love to embody this even more and become that essence even more. It was like, I didn't, sometimes I learned that there is another evolution that I didn't even know about. I'm like, this is amazing. I would love that. Like, yes. And so, again, the discovery and juiciness of life, of life continues on and we keep just fine-tuning ourselves. But in the beginning, it is a lot and it is much and it is big. But it's so worth to go through the stages and evolve yourself, especially if you truly want to live a life of love, a life of truth, of being that authentic voice and expression of your deepest truth and deepest goodness. It's worth it. It's worth it to find this out. And I would, again, I, the one takeaway for those, for anyone who's considering the uh, Divine Queen course, what is something you could say you will walk away with? I, you know, my favorite thing is it's confidence that women walk away with and actually believe in themselves. Like that's what I love the most in seeing the container when it's finishing up and how women actually come into their self-love and self-confidence. But truly women, what I wanted to leave you with is that you are divine. And you are goddess, and you are beauty, and you are divinity, and you are wholeness. And do not believe any lies that tell you that you are not it. And it is worth it, and it is time for you to come on a journey to really embody her, to become that essence, and just to lay all of that other stuff on a side, those voices. And those gossips and those delusions and those messiness that you might have grown up with, that is not your truest essence. So remember who you are. You know, the divine creates only divine. And that is who you are. You are already perfect. And it is just your journey to discover your perfection and your whole wholesomeness and your goodness. And you will you will get to step into this journey sooner or later. And I think the sooner the better. Sooner the better. And, you know, for me, specific, more specifically, even as the confidence is that whole thing of learning to love myself and choosing, actually, I ended a relationship out of it. And it was so, it was my best, as you said, my best teacher. And it really was. And, um, but I, because I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful for that man because I can look back and I can see all of the times that I said, I, I, I betrayed myself staying in it. And at the same time, I'm grateful to him for it because I can say, you know what, Jill? Gosh, you learned a lot. And boy, it took you, it catapulted you in this ability because it went so, so much suffering. And sometimes we have to go through suffering, you know, to be able to, to, to come out of the other side and see, you know, the journey. And then it's, it's, it was, it was so necessary. I don't know if I would be anywhere near where I am if I wouldn't have done that. And so I am truly grateful. I am so grateful. And, um, yeah, so to me, it's, it's finding truly, it's, it's finally, for me, it was the, it, I'll say this, it was the catalyst. It was the, the, the key that I needed for everything I'd been looking for all these years and all the personal development, everything I've done, your course was just like, opened it up and I went, aha, okay, there it is. I finally got it. I find, not that I got it, but it's, it's a journey, right? But it was, it was, it set me on the journey that I needed to have the confidence to say, this is different than everything else I've ever done. This is all about me and really going inside and there's nothing wrong with me. And, and it's just, I, it, it's the most amazing course. So anyway, I, um, I'm so grateful you're here today and that you were able to share a little bit with us about what this is. And I'm also going to put your links in there about the other courses you're doing too, because I think your relationship course is, when you do it again, is um, one of the best things I've ever done. So. Absolutely. I love all your courses. I love all your courses. Yeah, so. thank you so much. Thank you, Jill. And yeah. 
I love the work that you do. It's so amazing, so inspiring, and so needed in the world. And I love seeing your light shine. So thank, thank you. you for being you. And thank you for being such an amazing connector. And I think what I love about you, that the people that you bring and introduce, they're just good people. They're just good people. And you know that if they come in through Jill Collins, it's going to be a good person. Uh-huh. And you don't need to do your own vent- venting of the person. You know that this is, you already done the work. So I love that about you and about your community and how um, intentional you are about your connections and your friendships and your mentors and the people that you work with and who are your friends. It truly uh, puts you apart from a lot of other people. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Oh, that means so much. Thank you. It's, it's really touching. I appreciate it. Well, everyone, I thank you again today. Thank you, Svet. Thank everyone for tuning in. And definitely please share this video because it's so valuable to so many. I know you you probably thought of people as you're watching who could use this. So please share it. Hit the subscribe button and leave us a comment too. We're going to be available to answer questions or comments. And um, also we'll have all of our Instagram and, and social media too where you can find us there. So thank you, everyone. And stay connected through your awesome relationships. Take care.